Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this underwater scene. So quite a few interesting techniques to learn here. So let's make a start. So project set up first, 19, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds. So the first thing we're going to do is come over to the library generators and we're just going to bring in a color solid. And then we're also going to bring in cellular. And then we're going to drag that out of that group. So that makes a new group above. Let's come over and set its blend mode to add. I'm leaving that background set to blue, so it's easier for you to see this, this process, but we're going to turn it black eventually. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up the scale and we're going to set the X scale to 400. And you see that's kind of stretched it out nicely and we're already starting to get a kind of wave effect. So let's go for a size of 24 and then let's duplicate this cellular, right click duplicate. And let's reduce that size down to something like 10. And you can see now we've got some kind of mini wavelets. So let's add another element, add object generators. And this time we're going to go for caustics. I want to turn this refraction down to something like 50 and going to increase the brightness. And again, let's stretch it out. So what we want to do here is stretch it out again on X. So let's go for 300 here. And let's come back over here and let's reduce that size down to 0.1. So we've got these nice sort of bright intersections. So that's looking good. And finally, to this group, I want to add object generators and I want to grab a gradient. I'm going to use from the gradient library as a shortcut, I'm going to use grayscale. And let's open up the gradient editor. The Y start wants to be 540 and the Y end wants to be negative 540. And then I'm going to click here so I can access this middle uh, control here. And then we're just going to bring it down. So I want most of it to be white. And in actual fact, that left hand color isn't in fact white. So let's make it white. So then what I want to do is I'm going to select this group and right click add image mask. And I'm going to use that gradient as the mask source. So drag that in there. It automatically turns off the gradient, obviously. And we're going to switch the source channel to luminance. And the fact that we can see blue at the bottom of the screen means that we're actually fading off the lower half of the overall composite. So then I'm going to take this group here and I'm going to come to its rotation, X rotation. And Theoretically, we want this to be 90 degrees, but it's, it's a bit of a waste of effort to do that. And we're going to fudge it a little bit by going for 80 degrees. And then we're going to move it up on Y by 330 pixels. So that's starting to form the underwater, although the, the undersurface of the water. But you'll notice that uh, we've got a, a cutoff here. And that's because when I need to come into this gradient and make sure its X scale is sufficient. So let's just go for 400. It's kind of academic, really. It's just as long as it's wide enough. So I'm fairly pleased with that. I'm going to now, I think, probably to take that generator and just reduce its brightness. We don't necessarily need to go all the way if we want to kind of leave a little bit of blue in there. Yeah, I'm going to just leave a little bit of blue in there for now. Might uh, revise that later on. So the next thing we need to do is we need to group these two groups. So let's make a new group at the top, object new group, and let's pop those into that new group. And what we want to do is to turn all of these groups into 3D. So let's select them all, come to object and select 3D group. Uh, nothing has changed, but that will have an important uh, influence on, on how the scene works. So, okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to take this group and we're going to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And you'll notice I've called that new group rays, the one with the clone in it, and the other group, the other with the two other groups in it, I've called base. So the rays are going to be rays and this is how we're going to make them. We're going to come over to filters, blur, and select zoom blur. And we also want to come to filters blur and select uh, directional blur. So I'm going to just turn off directional blur while we concentrate on the zoom blur. So I'm going to set the amount to four 
And then I'm just going to scroll in this Y center. Uh, scroll upwards until basically the rays meet more or less the bottom of the frame like that. Now, as you see, this doesn't look particularly good. And that's because uh, the zoom blur works by uh, creating a set of samples that it sort of stretches out over the distance that you want. And so that's not entirely ideal for our purposes uh, because we don't want to see the stepping. So that's why I've used this directional blur. So let's turn that back on again. I need to set the angle to match the zoom blur. So I'm going to go for an angle of 90. And then I'm just going to increase that value till we've evened out these steps. And probably something like, you know, four, 500 is probably going to be about right. You see, it's not reaching to the bottom, but I, I don't mind about that because we're going to add in a light and then it's all going to start to make a bit more sense. So let's indeed do that. Let's come to add object and light. I'm just going to turn off the overlays so we're not confused by the gizmo there. So first of all, I want to set up the lights position. So let's have an X position of negative 400, a Y position of 325, and a Z position of uh, something like 200. And now you can see it's illuminating the this area here, and it's giving us this nice kind of pool effect. So what I also want to do now is to adjust the zoom blur so it's kind of coming from the direction of that light, so which is off, off slightly off to the side. So if we come into the zoom blur, we can just scroll in that X number field. So we're kind of getting more of an angle like that. And then what I want to do is I want to turn the overlays back on again, select the directional blur, and that gives us this gizmo. And what I can do is I can just line up that angle, so it's the same as the zoom blur. So I'm just going to come back to my light and I want to have an intensity of 400 and I want to come into the color and just give it a little bit of blue like that. That's really to taste, but that's kind of probably going to be quite nice, I think. You know, depending on how strong you want that light source to be, you can just crank it up and it's going to spread the rays out more. You know, that's a thousand. We've got a really nice little hotspot there. But I'm going for a kind of murkier scene. So I'm going to come back down to 500%, I think. So next, let's add in our text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group above the base. So if I come to Object New Group, it's, it's popped in a new group above the base. And I'm going to call that text. So then I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to type my text. So what lies beneath? Then let's come over to Format. Let's make sure we've got this text selected. Center align. Come over to the position, reset that. Come back into the text. Let's make this pretty big. And let's reduce the line spacing and maybe even the tracking as well. Get it to be relatively tight like so. So that I think I'm happy with. You can see how that's nicely interacting with the lighting and that's already pretty good, but we're going to do a lot more than this. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and import an asset called Rusty Metal. Bring that in uh, just above the text and we're going to right click on it, add image mask, and we're going to use the text as the source. I'm just going to turn off the, the rays so you can see this a little bit better and maybe just zoom in a little bit. So you can see we've got this kind of nice rusty texture in there. And I'm actually also going to just duplicate that rusty texture. So right click, duplicate, uh, remove the image mask and turn it off. And then to the rusty metal itself, I'm going to come over to and add filters, stylize and indent. And I don't want the standard indent look. I want to actually use the height map. And that's why I use this second copy of the uh, the texture. So I'm going to drag that into the height map there. And I'm going to switch to using red, I think, as the channel. And then I'm going to select this copy. I'm going to come to filters, color, uh, levels. And from the menu, I'm going to select red, which is the channel we want to focus on. And I'm going to use this control here, the black control, to crunch the blacks of the red, if that makes any sense. So you can see as I do so, we're still getting a bump on the, the rusty areas. Let's zoom in so you can see. So here we're getting a bump on pretty much everything because there's a red in all of it. But 
here we're focusing in just on the areas where the red is bright, which is obviously the rusty areas. And now we're getting a much smoother texture on the rest, but the rusty area feels kind of much more bumpy. You can see the difference that makes there. Let's also add an extrude to this. Now we can't do it directly to that, that rusty metal layer. We have to group it. So right click, group, and let's turn that to uh, actually 2D. And let's come over to filters and stylize and extrude. Let's set the angle to 270, the distance to five, and the back size, let's go for 0.98. And let's maybe just kind of reduce the back brightness down to 0.1 and the front brightness down to 0.5. Sorry, the back brightness is, should be 0.1, not 1. There you go. That's more like it. What I'm also going to do to give a little bit more interest to the edge, if you zoom in here, is come back to the text and appearance. And I'm just going to turn on the outline. An outline of, let's leave it at 1 and see what happens because what I want to do is I want to reduce the opacity down to 50%. So let's maybe just go up to, I don't know, let's try for three. Uh, and if I turn that on and off, you can see that it's just kind of made a more interesting edge. It's kind of like a little bit of a bevel on the edge. I think it just kind of gives it a bit more interest. So then let's turn back on the rays and see where we are. Now that's not working as we would like, and that's because we need to change the blend mode of this from normal to add. And that's looking a lot better. And in actual fact now, I think the, the text is a little bit too bright. So I'm going to select that rusty metal with the indent on it, the, the, the main text layer, as it were, and select color and levels. And then let's just bring down black level like that. So it's just a little bit more murky. That's the kind of look I think I want. Then there's just a couple of things I think we can do to find details. And the first of which is into this text group, I want to bring in at the top library generators and yet again cellular. I want to come over and change its blend mode to add. And then I want to increase its Y scale to 200%. Now what we want to do is mask it off so it's just appearing over the text and we can do that by borrowing the image mask that we've already made uh, from the rusty metal. So I'm going to select the image mask, hold down the auto option key and drag it onto the cellular and you can see that's just now masking it onto there and hopefully get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Now this level is much too much uh, so let's select the cellular and let's bring its level down to about sort of seven or something. And it's kind of a subtle effect, but it's adding just a little bit of, of extra interest. The idea that the light is, is actually hitting that text and creating this kind of rippling effect. So th that's one thing. And the other thing is that I want to bring in uh, some particles. So I'm going to come to import and I'm going to bring in from the assets folder this thing called basic dust. Bring that in. And let's move that out to the top there. And let's set its blend mode to add. And let's just bring the level of that down, something like 40. These kind of particle systems always, always work really nicely just to kind of give them, just to kind of glue the scene together. So there you go. That's the finished scene. Hope this has been an interesting one. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.